I'll talk about um, UDP and how it can make quick a little bit quicker, uh, in particular on optimizing Firefox's HTTP3 I.O. stack. Um, quick introduction about myself. I'm Max, a software engineer at Mozilla. I'm working on the HTTP3 and quick stack in Firefox. Um, you can reach me with mail at maxmyzin.de, uh, but also here in the hallway track or anywhere around. Cool. MX in pretty much everywhere. You find me on GitHub. Um, and then you might have seen me here uh, talking about peer-to-peer -peer networking or Kubernetes and Prometheus in a past life. OK, so what is Firefox? Um, yeah, we don't have the time for this. What is QUIC? <laughs> um, QUIC is a general purpose transport protocol. It's running on top of UDP. And the big thing here is that QUIC comes with its own encryption. And it encrypts both the data itself and the metadata, so the protocol data, uh, which is very powerful. We'll go a little bit into that in a bit. Um, it does connection establishment uh, within one RTT. So you can send your first request after the first RTT. And then in ideal cases, even on consecutive connections, you can sometimes do zero RTT, which is wonderful, especially in a web context where latency really matters. Um, it is stream-based for those familiar with uh, HTTP2 streams, for example. <laughs> it does not have uh, the problem of head-of-line blocking here as the stream mechanism is built into the transport protocol itself and not built on top of it. Uh, has fancy features like, for example, connection migration. So let's say you're at home uh, in your Wi-Fi and you're going, to, uh, you're going outside um, and you're switching to your 5G. Then the connection can migrate between those two networks. Um, it's easy to evolve. One big thing here is that a lot of Quick uh, is encrypted, especially also the transport uh, part. And thus, boxes in the middle cannot make assumptions uh, on a lot of properties of the protocol, and thus um, cannot bake it into um, their processes. And thus, it's easier to evolve the Quick protocol at the two endpoints. Um, and relevant for this talk, it's often implemented in user space on top of UDP, uh, always on top of UDP, but um, most, in most cases uh, implemented in user space. There are kernel space implementations. The folks at Microsoft do that. Um, but yeah, we'll focus on user space quick here. Cool. Um, let's put this a little bit in uh, the larger picture of web protocols. Um, most of you are probably familiar with the HTTP semantics. Um, now, in the early days, that will go over HTTP 1. Uh, optionally, that traffic would be encrypted with TLS SSL. That would then be on top of TCP, and then, yeah, that would be shoved down into your IP stack. Uh, later on, we had HTTP2 um, encryption um, mandatory with TLS 1.2 or 1.3, um, running on top of TCP, uh, and then again on top of IP. And now, the, the new thing here is um, same semantics still for your application. Uh, under that, we have HTTP3, uh, and that is then running on top of QUIC, uh, tightly integrated with TLS <laughs> on top of UDP this time, um, with IP underneath. Cool. So why is all of this relevant? <laughs> well, QUIC is already powering a big chunk of the internet. Um, obviously, there are many perspectives. Um, when it comes to the internet, one is, for example, Cloudflare Radar. They're roughly seeing one third of the traffic currently bits quick. Um, Firefox uh, roughly sees 25% of the traffic being H3 then then quick. Um, but yeah, different perspectives on a very complex system. So coming to the subject of the talk itself, uh, quick in user space. Unsurprisingly, um, if you run a transport protocol unoptimized in user space, this will not be as efficient as the heavily optimized TCP stack in the various kernels, right? Especially since um, the TCP has been optimized all the way down to the NIC, so to the network interface card. So yeah, very optimized stack, very hard to compete, especially when you're in user space. Um, now, in the unoptimized case, um, you would think that a user space quick implementation 
would do one syscall per UDP datagram. And if you, can, if you think of the internet with an MTU, so maximum transmission unit of 1,500 bytes, that's one syscall for every 1,500 bytes, both receiving and sending. That's a lot of syscalls. And then just one other thing here um, is that in the worst case, you get one act for every second packet. So again, a lot of syscalls to send and receive those acts. So in the early days, folks at Google I posted the link here. The slides are online, so if you want to check out the papers. Folks at Google uh, roughly estimated a 3.5x uh, in terms of CPU cycles per byte when you compare quick to TCP in the unoptimized case. So that's a lot, right? That's a lot of CPU cycles that you're wasting by using quick in that case. Um, yeah, I should probably go into this since we're, we're covering later on. Um, on the right side, you'll see this datagram, uh, uh, this <coughs> diagram coming up uh, more often. Uh, the basic case, Firefox has a quick stack. Uh, that quick stack exchanges datagrams with the operating system. The operating system exchanges datagrams with the NIC, and then the NIC sends it out on the internet, right? Uh, very simplified version of everything. How is this affecting applications, like, for example, Firefox? Um, don't expect you to read any of this. Um, just to give you a little bit of a ballpark, uh, what you see here is the socket thread, the Firefox socket thread. Um, Firefox drives all its I.O. with a single socket thread. This socket thread here is uh, doing a one gigabyte transfer on loopback, um, um, yeah, transferring data over quick. And the circled area down there, what you're seeing here, is Firefox just allocating a receive buffer and then passing it down to the operating system for the operating system to fill it with UDP data. Right? Again, the perspective, that's a lot of CPU time in the unoptimized case. So how can we do better than this? The, the holy grail in this is segmentation offloading. And most of you probably know this from the TCP world. Uh, Linux and Windows both support this also on UDP. The idea is that instead of sending one smallish, so 1,500 in the ideal case, datagram uh, down to the operating system, how about I give the operating system a very large one and then tell the operating system where it should divide them later on, so where to segment them. and then. In the ideal case, again, Firefox, uh, in its quick stack, passes down a very large diagram to the operating system, operating system to the NIC. Then the, the NIC segments it into separate datagrams, puts the headers in front of it, and then sends it out on the internet. Yeah. Uh, Linux and Windows support this. Um, we have some, we have GRO, um, and actually also URO, but that's, uh, there are some caveats to this on Firefox Nightly today. And looking at the metrics in the wild, we roughly see on the 75th percentile, we see two or more packets being read. Um, so that's already powerful as when you read instead of one, two, you basically, like the overhead of the syscall like diminishes by 50%. And then um, in the 95th percentile, we see 10 or more packets being read. So on, on large, like large throughput uh, transfers, uh, this is already giving you a lot of benefit here. If you compare this, um, oftentimes one says like um, packet trains move through the internet and ideally they arrive together uh, at your NIC on the receiver side. And yeah, a lot of CDNs do like a GSO, so a segmented send of 10 packets. And so it's unsurprising that we see uh, the number 10 here now in 95th percentile. Huh? Yeah, um, in terms of kilobit, uh, kilobyte, uh, it's 2.4 uh, on the 75th. And then, yeah, in the 95th, again, we're reading quite some large chunks here. This all gets us close to a gigabit um, on, on benchmarks, um, which is, I think, quite nice for for a browser uh, running on low-powered hardware. 
So when we come to the holy grail of uh, segmentation <coughs> offloading, we fall back to multi-message syscalls. Uh, the idea here, again, depicted on the right, instead of sending a small datagram, let's send multiple small datagrams down to their operating system and then to the NIC and so on. Um, we do this on macOS. There is, a, uh, there is the send message and receive message X uh, calls which are uh, not entirely supported, but they are there and they do work. Um, it's similar to what Linux offers with a send many message and a receive many message uh, syscalls. But on Linux, we have um, the fancier segmentation offloading. Combining the two has not been shown fruitful so far. So that's why we only do segmentation offloading on Linux, for example, and then multi-message on macOS. <coughs> and here again, if you are CPU bound, so on a CPU bound benchmark, we see roughly like an 11% performance improvement just by using these multi-message receive calls. Uh, on our quick throughputs. So that's quite massive. That really shows that those syscalls are very expensive for us. Okay. Um, another optimization is PLP MTUD. That's the packetization layer path MTU discovery for datagram transports, for those not familiar with it. And MTU is also an abbreviation, so it's actually the packetization layer path maximum transmission unit discovery for datagram transports. Uh, in short, it's RC8899. Um, the idea is, in, let's see whether our path can send larger datagrams, and let's just try it out, basically, and fall back to smaller ones if we can't. So, for example, if you're running, uh, if you're tunneling through a VPN, your MTU will be smaller, right? But if you're not tunneling through a VPN, you can send larger datagrams. So, ideally, like we support the VPN case, we start small and then. Uh, ramp up eventually. So here, again, the picture on the right, we have a datagram that is just slightly larger and we pass that to the OS and vice versa and so on. I think you get the idea. Uh, we, we hope at least that we get like a 10% uh, improvement uh, in terms of like uh, the amount of bytes we can send per datagram and then again the overhead per datagram is significantly reduced. Um, yep, yeah, again, um, links, the slides are online here. Then late, early on I said uh, ACK frequency or uh, ACKs are, we, we do a lot of syscalls for ACKs. Um, there is a draft uh, at the ITF, it's called quick acknowledgement frequency. The idea is let's not send so many ACKs. Uh, but obviously in a controlled way, so our congestion controller, for example, doesn't suffer from it. Um, in, the, in, in a contrived example, just to give you an idea of where the problem is, let's say you have one gigabit transfer. Uh, let's say uh, you want to transfer that to bytes, so divide by eight. Uh, we have an MTU of 1,500, so divide by that. Divide by two for every second packet you act. So that gives you 40K acts per second. And in the worst case, you read every single of those acts with a single syscall, right? So that's 40K syscalls per second just for the acknowledgements, not actually for the data, right? All your worst case scenarios, uh, quick implementations will optimize that by default, but then um, there is coming up the quick acknowledgement frequency draft, uh, which will allow the sender to propose an act rate to the receiver um, in this way, basically the receiver sending less acts and then the sender having to receive less acts. So this is coming. Uh, a couple of additional wins that are not directly tied to uh, performance. As part of this project in Firefox uh, to optimize the I.O. path, the UDP I.O. path, um, we have been looking around and instead of reinventing the wheel, um, we are using Quinn UDP for the UDP syscall uh, layer. And Quinn UDP is actually part of the Quinn project. Quinn is a different uh, Rust quick implementation. Um, and so we're collaborating with them and yeah, basing everything on their code here on the IO path. So that's very nice. And now Firefox's quick stack already in Rust does all of its IO also in Rust. So in a memory safe language. Um, in addition, using all these modern syscalls, we can now um, get more metadata. 
um, when we send and receive UDP datagrams. And one very important one here is uh, ECN, Explicit Congestion um, Notification. I'm not going to introduce that today. For those that are already familiar with it, we see roughly in the wild, so Firefox Nightly already does mark um, and read ECN. Um, we see roughly 50% of paths being ECN capable, which is very promising uh, and great for us. And then the 75th percentile, um, we see roughly 0.6% uh, of packets being marked. So that, <laughs> obviously, congestion in itself is not great, but uh, packets being marked shows us that uh, the boxes on our path actually are able to manage the queues with ECM. And then lastly, um, we have been working a bunch on our memory management. Um, I showed you earlier, um, there is a big chunk in our CPU flame graph previously of allocating memory just to receive something. And what we're doing now is we have a single 64K buffer for the entire Firefox process uh, for all quick connections. That's allocated once on the first connection and then used for receiving um, throughout the entire lifetime of the Firefox process. So this entire chunk of CPU uh, that you saw earlier in the profile is gone. Um, what is nice is Rust's borrow checker um, gives us a soundness check of this, of our memory reuse at compile time. And then, yeah, it does show a significant CPU time uh, reduction. So what's next? Um, well, we have one more quick talk by Phyllis here uh, later today. And then Lars is giving another talk uh, at the Mozilla Dev Room for those interested and want to learn more about Quick. In terms of what, what's next for Firefox, uh, we're rolling out PMTUD. Um, then ECN is already in Firefox Nightly and hopefully is going to um, make it into beta and release soon. And then um, we're looking into the ACK frequency draft to get our current implementation, which is an older version of the draft, uh, up to date. Um, the optimizations that I talked about today, I introduced in a generic fashion, both send and receive. We have mostly focused on the receive path so far. That's unsurprising, like a browser mostly downloads things. Uh, but long term, we would also try to optimize the send path, so introduce GSO, USO, which is the Windows equivalent, send message X, and so on. And also, ideally, have a long-lived send buffer uh, to reduce those memory allocations. Other things uh, around congestion controllers, like, for example, high start for our cubic would be nice, uh, and various other things. So um, in case you want to get involved, um, as I said, a lot of this is already in Firefox Nightly, so check out Firefox Nightly and you're already running those optimizations. It's soon, some of them are already in beta and release. Um, check that out. Um, then, in addition, maybe I can convince some folks here, uh, the quick implementation <coughs> of Firefox is on GitHub. It's entirely written in Rust. And so if you want to help uh, make a modern transport protocol faster, and thus also make a browser faster, um, yeah, come over on, on GitHub, talk to us. Um, there's also a matrix room, and you can reach out to me. All right, that's, that's all from my end. Thank you very much. For